I'll take it down. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> and at this point, I'd like to uh, give the opening of the uh, meeting to Councillor Jake Hebert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. January 7th, 200, 2020. I want to start off by wishing our Ukrainian and Polish friends a very Merry Christmas and not to all those others that are celebrating Christmas uh, today. A very Merry Christmas. 2020, who would have believed it? Where has time gone? It is said that life is but a fleeting moment or a fleeting glance. How true. I want to take us back 50 years, a time when most of you probably weren't even born. Apollo 11 had just landed on the moon and thus making history. The U.S. had just invaded Cambodia. The Concorde had its first supersonic flight and the Beatles disbanded. An average house cost just over $23,000 in Canada and the average wage was $9,400. 2020 marks 50 years ago that I was sworn in as a police officer for the province of Manitoba as an officer for the city of Winnipeg. Today, January 7th, Ukrainian Christmas, 46 years ago, I was sworn in as a police officer for Canada for the Royal Canadian Mount of Police on this very day. My salary was just over $5,000 annually. 50 years have come and gone, a fleeting moment. What was the gl glamorous oh, I should, life of a police officer in those days? I speak for myself, somewhat tongue in cheek. I take you back to July 21st, 1970. That was the day I just I'd finished high school, and it was the uh, day before I wore a city police uniform. 18 years of age. I met my father in Winnipeg that evening. He proceeded to buy a daily paper, check the want to add sections for a room to rent. The first place we checked was 632 Maryland, just down from the Maryland Hotel. Mrs. Somerville, an elderly lady, showed us the upstairs room, which had a bed, a small table, two chairs, and a hot plate, if any of you know what a hot plate is. The communal fridge and bathroom were down the hall, shared with a cab driver who recently got out of jail for having served time for murder. And the, se and the second room was a European adult who uh, was unemployed and liked drinking Pepsi all day. I believe the rent was around $40. My dad said that would be suitable. And uh, I had no car, a small bag of clothes, and maybe $5 in my pocket. My dad left and went home to Cleefeld. Young, but not daft, and wanting to be on time for work at 8 o'clock next day, I went to the corner service station, bought a map of the city, and proceeded to keep, find my way to the police station situated just two kilometers to the northeast. Standing at the corner of William and Princess, I asked a pedestrian where the police station was. This individual pointed to a large building that said, public safety building, not police station. How was I to know? I was from Hostadt. <laughs> Policing was different in those days. I started as a cadet and two years later as a full-fledged constable walking the beat in Winnipeg's North End. Being 20 years of age, I was underage to possess and consume alcohol. However, on duty, I could seize and possess alcohol. There were no radios, cell phones, computers, breathalyzers. Any name checks had to be conducted on a uh, phone that was a call box that was on the lamp standard and uh, at 40 below. Those are awful cold on your ear. It was my word, my word was enough in those days to charge somebody for impaired driving. A lot of power. Having been in Winnipeg for nearly two years, and by now I was able to purchase a 66 Dodge Valiant, a hand-me-down for my older brother. Fast forward three and a half years to January 7th, 1974. Having resigned from Winnipeg Police and having heard the adage, goes west, go west, young man, I followed my dreams as my car headed to Regina. Joining the Mounties was referred to as having scarlet fever. Six months later, having completed training, I was on my way to Lumbee, British Columbia, having been told it was somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Again, pulled up to a service station, bought myself a map, and headed to British Columbia. In the trunk of my car were all my worldly possessions packed in one small trunk. Arriving at Lumbee Detachment, I was given a tiny room at the back of the office with a phone, and that I was to answer on or off duty. Rent for the room would be deducted from my monthly paycheck. Arrangements had been made by my boss for me to eat at the local hotel at a predetermined price to be paid at the end of the month. Ten days later, the work schedule indicated that I was entitled to three days off. I asked my boss if I might drive to Kelowna to see a troopmate. 
After much deliberation and considering the generous heart of my sergeant, I was given permission to leave the detachment area, providing that in the morning I would first wash the three police cars by hand and that I would be back by six o'clock at night. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to uh, sign in and sign out in the book. A few weeks later, and with my worldly possessions in the trunk of my car, off to Kelowna, a year later to Sycamus, and then to Vancouver Drug Squad. Not having much money for a place to live, I sold my beater car that I owned at the time and again moved into a bedroom in Vancouver into a rooming house. I remember many a night being lonely, sitting at my room playing the Western music on the record player, wondering if the singer was ever going to get his wife, his dog, or his old truck back. After a few drinks of Kahlua and cream, I don't think I much cared. I usually tried phoning my parents once a week. I would ask the landlady if I might use the phone to call home. I would look closely at the watch and at the 10 minute mark, I would hang up and I would pay my landlady. This is how I kept in touch with my family. When I lived in Sycamus, what I would do is if I saw a Penner transfer truck drive through, I'd flick my lights and they knew that they had to stop at the Husky station in town and uh, they would update me what was happening in Steinbeck. My mother, bless her soul, for many years had purchased the yearly subscription to the Carolyn News, which would be delivered to me wherever I was stationed. Did you ever think or imagine that this would be the glamorous life of a young Mountie, living the dream in British Columbia, the big city of Vancouver, living in a rooming house, no car, very little money, and no overtime pay? Actually, that wasn't quite true. We worked a lots of overtime, no pay. At the end of the 70s, work changed and life obviously got better. I've given you a glimpse of a what somewhat lighter side of what my life was like 50 years ago. I cherish these memories, fond memories of the places I lived and all the people I rubbed shoulders with. My friends were mainly persons in the community who became dear friends. They helped, me mo they helped mold me and make me what I am today. I enjoyed every place I was stationed from Vancouver to Halifax and in between several times. Each place I lived in the past 50 years had super people who cared for me and thus influencing me. Had to do it all over again, I would say, no regrets, where do I sign up? It is now the year 2020. What do I say to family, to council today, to the people of this community? I believe today is a time that we briefly reflect on the past, learn from our mistakes, and build on our successes. More importantly, we now acknowledge that God has protected us and provided for us faith, uh, to giving us faith to continue. Even when we think and consider the turmoil in the Middle East today, God is in charge. Today, it's a time to focus on the upcoming year, to dream big, to embrace the future, allowing our visions to give us hope for the future. To you and your loved ones, Happy New Year. Thank you, Councillor Hebert, for that uh, thought-provoking opening. Council, uh, we have the agenda in front of us. I uh, need a motion to adopt. Councillor Swakes for us, second by Councillor Hebert. Any comments? Nothing in closing? Call for the question, all those in favor? That is carried. Council, we, uh, number four, we have the minutes of the December 17th, 2019 regular council meeting. They start on page one. Uh, we've all had the uh, opportunity to review. Uh, for a motion to approve. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Siemens. Any comments? No discussion. Nothing further. Nothing in closing. Call for the question. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, is there any business arising from the minutes, Council? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to number six, the public hearing. It's just a little after 735. Uh, it is uh, 6A, bylaw 2131, read the local improvement for Clear Spring Green Pathway. At this moment, I will close the council meeting and open the public hearing. And uh, Mr. Wargentine, could I please call you to the podium to introduce this file? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, this uh, public hearing is to uh, consider 
Local Improvement Bylaw 2132 for the uh, Clear Spring Greens Pathway Construction, also represented by Local Improvement Plan uh, 2020-02. Notices as required under the Municipal Act have been issued. Uh, there uh, are 14 pieces of correspondence related to the file uh, that were provided to Council uh, in their mail bins earlier today. And subsequent to that, uh, two additional pieces of correspondence were received and those also have been placed in uh, Council's bin. Uh, purpose of the uh, public notice for the local improvement plan uh, is to construct approximately 850 lineal meters of asphalt pathway along Park Road East between Carleton Drive and uh, the Steinbeck Aquatic Center and also from Ramsgate to Fairway Close. Total costs of the project are estimated to be $625,000 to be financed with uh, a borrowing of $625,000. The borrowing is to be repaid over a five-year period with an annual payment of $152,431 uh, and some cents based on a maximum estimated interest rate of 7%. Uh, with respect to uh, the project, uh, the most recent project estimates for the pathway indicates the total project cost, as I mentioned, of $625,000 consisting of a three-meter wide asphalt surface lighting and fencing to serve the Clear Spring Greens and Ramsgate neighborhoods. Uh, based on the estimated project cost, each of the 146 benefiting properties will be levied an upfront, upfront cash amount of $4,280.82 or an annual amount of $1,044.05 during the five-year term of the debt, debt issue should the landowners choose to finance a portion uh, of the project costs. Thank you, Mr. Morganini. If you could just stay at the podium for, for just a few minutes. Okay. Um, we will get to questions and objectors in just a minute. But what, we've, what we saw was some commonality in, in questions. We, they they uh, were coming, reoccurring, reoccurring. So we prepared five questions that were most commonly asked. And hopefully that will, will I'll ask them to uh, Mr. Warkentine. He will answer them. And hopefully that will, will help uh, some of you here at the meeting tonight. So question number one, uh, Mr. Warrington, is why is the interest rate set at 7%? Local improvements are required to advertise uh, a, a maximum rate of interest that could be charged uh, if there is finance required for a local improvement. Uh, this is the, the rate that the city has set and typically sets for all local improvements. Um, the advertising is done this way due to the degree of uncertainty uh, and that any borrowing may not be secured until late in 2020. If the project proceeds and a borrowing is made, the affected landowners would only be required to pay the actual interest rate in effect at the time of the debt issue, which would then be in line with market rates. Thank you. Question number two, how is the Hespler sidewalk paid for? As a comparison, uh, as you mentioned, there were some questions uh, with comparative pathway projects that the city has undertaken in the past. This particular project was completed in 2010-2011 uh, with a federal recreation grant uh, consisting of about $167,000. Uh, the balance of the project, which was about $650,000, was paid for by the city reserve funds. Uh, this question is not in there, but it's subsequent to the, the answer you just is. Was there any grants available for this project? Uh, this particular project, there were no grants available that the city uh, uh, secured. Okay. Number three, uh, uh, why was the sidewalk not included originally in the development? Uh, this neighborhood is uh, rather unique. Uh, there's a few areas in Steinbeck uh, that have what's called a rural residential zoning. Um, and uh, with that type of zoning, there are certain standards uh, that developments are allowed to proceed uh, with that are different than regular urban style development within Steinbeck. Uh, and what that did is it permitted a rural standard of development with rural style of servicing for things like, for example, low pressure sewer, uh, private wells, or open ditches. Uh, and this, uh, in particular, the rural level of service model does not require the developer to include sidewalks or pathways in its design. Thank you. And why is the neighborhood asked to pay? 
Uh, well, generally, it's uh, it's a matter of uh, general approach that the city has taken with uh, local improvement projects uh, or pathway development projects in the past. Um, and uh, specifically for this neighborhood, provision for a pathway was not designed for the neighborhood, as I mentioned. Uh, and uh, delegation, uh, there was a delegation representing uh, what appeared to be a majority of the neighborhood, which uh, that appeared before council in summer, uh, that requested that the pathway be constructed. Uh, and finally, council, uh, uh, from uh, discussions that have been held to date, is of the opinion that the neighborhood derives most of the benefit from the pathway, and so should be responsible to, to pay for most of the cost. Thank you. And what is the city contributing to this project? Uh, there is a, a component uh, which was the purchase of a lot uh, that uh, the city of Steinbeck had already uh, proceeded to, uh, to conclude and close. Uh, so that purchase has been completed uh, and the city has also arranged uh, for the use of other land uh, to permit the construction of the pathway uh, to access the existing uh, transportation network. Uh, total city investment to date has been about $120,000. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, we are now going to open it up to questions or objections from the gallery. Um, one thing I, I do want to ask, because there, there, there could be a, a lot of objections or a lot of speakers, if someone is, is um, saying points that you exactly feel or agree with, you can, you're totally free to say, come and say, them all over again or you can speak as much as you want but if you simply just want to come to the podium and say I object for all those same reasons your name and your address that's fine you don't have to if you're not comfortable with it you don't have to say a, a long speech that's all I'm we'll just we'll take your objection it'll mean the same thing but I'm just if if you don't feel like speaking for a long time I'm just giving you that option, okay? So we'll open up. Are there any questions or objections from the gallery? Okay, yeah. State your name and address, please. My name is Serge Jolliker. I live at 126 Carlton Drive. <clears throat> and I actually prepared some things for you guys if you wanted to pass these down just so you can have them. So I'll be reading it more or less verbatim on there anyways, but if you want, you could follow along or... Uh, and some of it you've just touched on, which is great. You got a little ahead of us and answered some questions. So some stuff I'll read maybe will spark some other questions or whatnot, but uh, I'll go through it anyways the way I've written it here. So, Okay. I will say this. All right, so as early as 2015, it was brought to the city of Stymac's attention that a pathway for safe access was needed outside of Clear Spring Greens. And then I put just some links for reference just to say where, where we've seen this stuff anyways as the public. Our last meeting was on July 16, 2019, where many of us met with you to bring up the issue again of a pathway needed to safely exit our development, to which the response was that you were actively working on the plan, which was true. You were in the process of purchasing a lot at an inflated market price of 116,000 plus closing costs, administration fees, et cetera, to create an access to the golf course uh, for a path option. Little did we know that we would be getting a nice little Christmas present letter proposing that the local residents pay for the entire budget at 625 thousand for the remaining cost of the project at first it wasn't clear i thought maybe that included the lot but i understand that's that's something that you guys were putting forward as part of this plan um <clears throat> so it's a portion um there's concern all around this proposal uh and our first concern is the proposed path location based off of information originally received from purchasers of these lots so the people that first bought in this development uh, were getting copies of plan as you can see in there that actually stated that there was a public walk uh, over top of the area that was just currently excavated where there was some, we, we saw recently that there was new culverts put in uh, water drainage there. I guess there was an issue in the past few years, but that was the area identified previously as a public walk. And so people bought their lots based off of this information, uh, potentially backing onto the golf course where they would have undisturbed view in the back on the driving range there. So it appears that the approved intent was to have a public walk out of the development through this already city-owned 20-foot wide access uh, when these lots were sold, which did in fact influence buyers' decisions to purchase a lot backing onto the undisturbed golf course driving range. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, <clears throat> we have been told in the past this area was designed as a low service area, and I'm not going to get huge into that. I understand what low service means. It would mean that there's, uh, you know, ditches, just like uh, uh, Troy mentioned, um, serviced by well water, low pressure sewer, which is the reason the development fees weren't taken for transportation, which includes sidewalks. However, I think the misunderstanding lies in the fact that we uh, we're, aren't current lobbying for sidewalks within our developments. Uh, we're, we're asking for those uh, for safe access outside of our development. Right, so it's, it falls under a little bit of a different uh, request that we're looking for. We're, we understand it's difficult when we have ditches to put sidewalks within our developments. We're not asking for that, right? We're asking for safe access out of our developments. Um, so, and then I just reference a few uh, parts here uh, from different captions in, um, from Steinbeck Online so that development fees were taken out. These low service lots were sold at comparable market value to full service lots throughout Steinbeck. Uh, and neither assessed values or taxable rates indicate that these lots were sold at or are worth a lesser price due to low service. Um, so, so even though the, the development fees were taken out, we're, we're still paying fair market value for these lots. I know because I'm a realtor. I, I compare lots. I compare prices. I compare locations all around Steinbeck. There was no indicator that I was getting a more affordable lot in my area compared to anywhere else I could have been. I personally like the location. I like that it's close to shopping. I like that it's close to get out of town to Winnipeg. That's the reason I bought there. Locationally, it's nice, but it wasn't cheaper. <clears throat> All right. Now, um, what we don't understand is that the entire Deerfield development, which is also a low service development, rural residential service, exactly the same. In, there's only two, I believe, in Steinbeck, Deerfield, and Clear Spring Greens, uh, as far as larger developments goes. Uh, they actually started developing prior to Clear Spring Greens. Um, we know that none of you were around to make these decisions. Very different council back then, different mayor, everything like that. But you have to wonder why they would make the developer pay development fees for, fees for pathways uh, in that development at that time, but not in Clear Spring Greens. They were treated a little bit differently. The developer was, was held to a different standard in that area than it, than it was in our area at that time, as you can see, because there's currently still uh, pathways and floodways and things being put up there uh, with some, with some of left, those leftover development fees that were paid at that time, but it's still a low service area. So that, that, we beg that question as well too. There's a striking resemblance to the issues we are facing to the same issues that were presented by Deerfield residents in 2006. Uh, which was referenced as well too. Uh, this was completely resolved by the city. So there was people that brought up the issue of the fact that they were had to come down the 52 highway down Main Street, which has a wider shoulder, of course, right? So it was safer still. There's higher speed, but it still was safer at that time. Uh, this was completely resolved by the city of Steinbeck within five years from the first visible public complaint. Uh, five years later, there were, you could rollerblade down to Hespler from Deerfield, right? Um, with a six and a half foot wide concrete pathway extending approximately 958 meters uh, from Hesper to Creekside Place, uh, with a street lighting, with street lighting, I should add, at a city cost of 431,000. Actually, it actually sounded like it was it was higher because there was a $167,000 grant, um, and then they, they said what 600,000 or so was from city reserves on that one. I only had it at 431. Um, so there was also that $166,000 grant, which was absorbed by a federal grant and the balance from a mixture of the capital development reserve and general operating funds. That's the info we got from uh, financing in, in the city of Steinbeck here, uh, which resulted in zero additional tax implication to all the benefiting residents of Deerfield. So there, Deerfield, just like Clear Spring Greens, Deerfield is the only benefiting residents of that path, whereas we, like mentioned, would be the only benefiting residents of this path, but it's still the same situation. Uh, so then again, I would just, as far as the five-year breakdown goes, where they were in five years from first complaint to completion, uh, we are very far from that, which it feels like anyways. In five years, uh, all we have is uh, an empty lot right now and a bill for $625,000, which honestly is a little hard to swallow when it breaks down to almost $5,000 a person, depending on how people can pay it. Fast forward to 2020, we have almost an identical situation at hand, but with one very different outcome, homeowners are expected to pay 4280 or 5220, potentially less if the interest rate is potentially lower. I don't know if that's the maximum, but even if it was 200 bucks, you're still at $4,500 uh, over a five-year period. I've talked with several people in the area who are working on single incomes right now uh, or disability issues from one spouse uh, or have different financial burdens that is just not feasible solution for them. We have to ask the question, why? Why is it that the city was able to connect the Deerfield pathway at no additional cost to taxpayers, and it wasn't all funded by the developer fees, uh, and no additional cost to taxpayers, but not our area? 
Why is it that there was no possibility, and this is a question, I'm not pointing fingers, right? But why was there no possibility for the additional $423,000 or so from the doubled gas tax fund to marry perfectly with the need to address a major safety concern and at the same time line up with our official uh, community plan to promote active transportation networks that include all forms of human-powered transport, such as walking, running, cycling, rollerblading, and wheelchair use, which is in Steinbeck's official community plan, page 24. Instead, this money has been earmarked to keep asphalt overlay program double because of the one-time doubling of the federal gas tax grant. So instead of maybe, I, I'm not sure if it was feasible to use that money, it seemed like transportation, any form of transportation was an expected use for that. Uh, I'm not sure if it was feasible for this plan, but it sure looked like it based off the information that I was seeing that it could have potentially, not all, but a portion of it been used. Um, maybe all, but uh, at least uh, some, some portion. I don't see many people coming in uh, in hordes uh, crying about uh, their streets needing to be repaved. You know, I know it's an ongoing thing, I know it has to be done, um, but we're talking about a high level safety concern over uh, a, a, smoother, a smoother drive to your driveway. That's the challenge that I see when I see this stuff. Um, also, back in April, I noticed uh, there was also another uh, provincial grant. The, the government announced a new grant that will give the city 250000 per year, um, but there was no uh, place for it. The budget was already in place. That was uh, to be pushed over until into 2020. It didn't state exactly what that needed to be used for. It seemed pretty open-ended, um, but, uh, but there, was no, there was no immediate need to, uh, uh, to use it this year. It was earmarked for maybe other items in the other years. So I just see more money that maybe doesn't have to be taxpayer money locally, uh, grants, uh, provisions from federally or provincially that maybe could have potentially been earmarked for a portion uh, of this plan. Uh, so in closing, what we need from you, our elected representatives, is help. Some of you came to our area prior to election saying you understand the need we have and would strive to get it done. We are in this predicament right now due to shortcomings from poor decisions and approvals that were made by councils past. Um, clearly there was an issue with this area that was overlooked uh, back then, that was in 2006, that we were looking at 14 years ago already, around there, and, um, and none of you were around for it, but it's an issue that happened. It was an error that was made, uh, in my opinion, um, to, to, get, to safely get families uh, connected to our communities. And um, uh, we understand that there are many difficult decisions to make in these scenarios. However, we as a collective, gr collective group don't feel that this letter was received, uh, that, that we received is the appropriate solution to this problem. We're asking for a plan that does not have to impact your taxpayers like it was resolved for Deerfield residents. We need your help to have safe access out of our development so we can actively enjoy what the city we live in has to offer. And that's where I ended it there, so. Thank you. Anyone else would have questions or would like to object? I am Stephen Pellin, 13 Mooney Avenue. Okay, good. I would like to say that I agree with everything Sarah just bringing up there. Um, when you have three kids and you're trying to get them into biking, running, rollerblading, that kind of thing, when you get buzzed by a vehicle going 60, although at the time it was 70, the speed limit has come down, thank you very much for that. Um, when you get buzzed once or twice, you realize that it's not worth getting out of the development if you're risking injury like that. It only has to happen once or twice and you're just done trying. So now we actually have to load up our van, drive into town, and go from there. So we really want a sidewalk like this so that we can let the boys go to the park on their own. But right now, we're just not comfortable doing that. And I very much doubt that if you would have kids of six to eight years old, that you'd be comfortable letting them bike down Park Road with no shoulder, nothing. So I do have one to submit as well on a formal uh, objection, so I didn't know where to hand it in, but that's all. I agree with Serge. And Okay, one here. we can uh, leave that with the uh, city manager. Hey there. I'd like to thank Serge, just a, uh, uh, Gord uh, Penner and uh, 18 McFarland Place. 
So I, I know many of you guys came knocking to our door and uh, looking for votes, and I talked to many of you guys about that sidewalk way back, and I have a great deal of respect for each one of you. Um, I, Serge did a great job of presenting a very, I think, concise option like to, to uh, research. Um, $5,000 is a lot of money. Um, as he said, there's a lot of single income families. Um, it, it's going to make it difficult to sell a home in our area, obviously, if there's a big tax bill that's connected to it. Um, we already have high taxes. Um, I, I'm, I have a brother who lives in Alberta, in Spruce Grove, and uh, his taxes are comparable to mine. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it's something to consider. And I actually have to ask the question of, of you gentlemen and, and uh, Susan. Um, if you lived in our neighborhood, would you pass this along the same way? I, and I would say this respectfully, would you do the same thing? Or would you look for alternate funds to try to finance this? And that's what I ask. And um, I, I'm totally willing to uh, pay a portion. I just think that maybe we haven't uh, researched or found uh, the funds that may be available. And uh, I think Serge did a great job pointing some options out. So. And this would be my formal objection, so. Uh, just a question, um, Councilor Penner. Yeah, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, in terms of, you said you were willing to pay a portion. So for example, when I look at the breakdown, uh, the lighting for this path is $208,000, which is about a third of the cost. It's quite significant. So if you're looking at uh, $4,200 ballpark, is what the letter said you'd be required to pay up front. If we take out the lighting, it would be approximately $2,800. Is that something that's more... I can't valuable? speak for the residents here. No, I'm asking you. Yeah, I can't speak for the residents here. Um, I would say even that's probably a bit on the steep side. I think that we need to look at other funding. Uh, and I think that he mentioned the gas... Uh, you mentioned the gas... Uh, gas tax option. Gas tax option. And there's a few other things. I, I just think that... You know, look at what you did with Deerfield or what the previous council did with Deerfield. Maybe there's something that we can do that is going to be a little more workable for... And maybe that some of it, does it have to be paved right away? I don't know. Something to consider, right? Okay, Councillor Damien Penner has a question. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, just to follow up question on Councillor Penner's uh, qu um, question to you. If this plan was to proceed, would it be more palatable to forego the lighting and cost approximately $2,800? We as council are trying to look at every avenue possible here. So would it be more, for you personally, would it be more palatable to pay that? To pay, sorry, lighting? what? Uh, with, if we remove the lighting portion and then the cost being approximately $2,800 as opposed to the 42. It's still a hefty bill, yeah. I, 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 I'd, I'd have to think about it. I, I, that's just... I can't speak for the rest of the... And I'm not asking you to, sir. It's just uh, for you personally. I'd have to talk to my wife. Mm. <laughs> Good answer. How does that sound? Great answer. That, that's a great answer. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. Penner, I have a question for you. you. You mentioned about taking off the asphalt. Well, we talked about that. And the challenge there is then it cannot be rollerbladed on uh, or like wagons will have a tougher time. Like we just thought any wheels... Uh, other than bicycles would have a challenge and that's why yeah. we thought if we make a good product here and we put asphalt on it that's that that would be better for you and that's why that's why we went this this road like we spent time on this it's, this is not just something we slapped together in in five minutes while we were having coffee we we have spent hours on this mm -hmm. uh, different meetings and and we just this is just this is what we could, could come up another, with. Another option is a private, uh, uh, you know, partial private funding, possibly. I don't know, you've probably seen cities with, um, you know, sponsored uh, walkways or stuff like that. I don't know if that's an option as well, but I'm just throwing out ideas. But uh, So, anyway. Well, I mean, I guess, well, then I'd, I'd throw that at you. The, the fundraising for something like that would have to come from the neighborhood. Right? Possibly. I don't know. Yeah. 
I, I don't have the answers. I just say I, I'm just saying that it's a bit of a steep jump. It's horribly so. awkward looking from our situation as a city to go out and look for sponsorship yeah. for a project. Very very difficult. Yeah. But uh, okay, thank you. I, I like I say, I'm just voicing my objection. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else with uh, questions or, co or uh, objections? I was out in the hall there oh, with about 20 other people. State your name and your address. Please. Oh, sure. Dave Johnson, and I live at 34 Carleton, which would be directly behind the proposed path. Uh, when we purchased our lots, I believe Serge mentioned that we had given, been given that little pamphlet saying there was going to be a walkway going between houses, lots three and four, or four and five. Uh, we were right behind the driving range and we chose that location because we wanted to see the driving range, right? Like we wanted to see the green grass, all that kind of stuff. Putting a pathway behind a driving range, have you thought about fencing that's going to be needed? Is that in the costs? Yes, that's in the cost. Do you realize what that will do for the value of the homes that are behind that fence and path? There was no consultation about buying that lot with the people who live there, but a lot was purchased over value. And now we're putting a path in at a huge cost when there was already a proposed pathway. So we're a little confused and not very happy with the way things have proceeded here. And I don't know if you would do the same thing to your own home. If you had put up a big fence and a path right behind your house without talking to the people there. It doesn't make sense to me. And there are six or seven homes that are being affected by this thing. Okay, I have a question for administration. Troy, will there be a fence behind those homes on Carleton? I believe a fence uh, has been uh, been allowed for uh, because uh, of concern with the development of the pathway uh, along the driving range portion of the golf course. There was a concern for the uh, ensuring the public safety for pedestrians using the pathway. Uh, so yes, there has been a fence that has been proposed along uh, the sections that run through the golf course property. Okay. So and if you look at the actual development pathway that was put in, it's not behind the driving range. So you don't need a fence. You didn't need to buy a lot to put a path in. There was already a path there. Why are we not using that? Why are we spending huge amounts of money on a lot? And extra pathway, extra fencing. Yep. Okay, uh, Councillor Damien Pinner has a question for... Administration, please. Go. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Workington, that public reserve that is uh, located there, is there uh, consistent and regular drainage issues that come up on that corner currently? Uh, there have been some challenges uh, for drainage within that development. Uh, that particular corner uh, that Mr. Johnson re is referring to is the uh, primary outlet uh, for all of the surface water drainage for that neighborhood. Uh, and. Uh, Perhaps a question, if I may, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of any plan that was submitted to the city that showed that there was to be a walkway uh, on that particular piece of public land that Mr. Johnson refers to. Uh, perhaps uh, if he could refer to wh whom he received the pamphlet from? Uh, I received it from my lawyer when we were purchasing the house. So it was in our lawyer's package that we received. Uh, it's in Serge's report. It'll show you very clearly. It has all the dimensions of the lots. It shows a pathway, a walking pathway, I believe it says. So I don't know. I don't know where the thinking all of a sudden took off and said, "Hey, let's let's buy a lot and put in a big path behind people's houses and fencing." And I just I don't even understand that. Like to me, it's, it doesn't make sense. But that's my own. Well, not my own thing. There's six or seven houses there. And you're at a significant cost by extending a pathway. I would request that you sell the lot, get the money back, and put it towards the path through the proper 
area. Okay, Councilor Perry. And I object to your whole plan here. Thank, yeah, thank you, Mr. The, uh, more of just a response and, and comment, uh, uh, sir. We, I can assure you, have looked at this extensively. And part of my question to Mr. Workington was to, to lead up to uh, that that was an option that we did look at. And uh, with there being drainage issues, uh, the only option that we have to be able to engineer that properly so that there isn't further drainage issues as administration presented to us uh, was with box culverts, which are incredibly expensive. And the purchase, the purchase price of the lot was actually less than less than the, the cost of box culverting that that section all the way down to behind those properties. It is something that we definitely did look at. We tried to uh, not keep every stone unturned that is possible. Well, um, and can I interrupt so you, Mr. Penner? I, that's that is that that is. Uh, in, in a moment, that is uh, something that I personally thought for sure that should be an option and was with more information was corrected. We just uh, finished digging up that whole lot and putting in two big culverts now. So drainage issues should be dealt with because I'm assuming you had engineers who figured out what kind of drainage you needed. So putting a path over that culvert shouldn't be a problem. I, I, I can't comment further than the information that we received. Yeah, well, I think you need to relook at your information from our perspective. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please state your name and address. I am Barb Friesen, and we are at 33 Muni. Uh, I just have a few kind of questions. The one is, if you are going ahead with the pathway the way it is laid out now, it still doesn't solve the problem for the kids to go to school. They still have to take the Old Tom Road to, to bike to school. And there is no pathway planned from there right out to Hasper. And the other thing is, with the other part uh, annexed, when that is developed, are they, they are going to benefit from this part of the pathways as well, considering, you probably plan, would plan it different than this one was, but and probably because they would use the same pathway. Is, are, is that going to, are you going to take that into consideration that that would bring our costs down? Okay, to answer your, your first question, that is, uh, there's no link to to the, to the middle Boulevard. school. No, well, it doesn't give there any. There is. Seat. It's through the park. That's why we. That's why we brought it there. We thought of that too. It's the okay. safest way to bring a link to the park, you, okay. and there's a pathway through the park that takes you right to Lone Boulevard. Okay, okay. that's that's why we did it that way because it it takes you to all of uh, the recreation and the park and shopping but also mm -hmm. can take you down to, to uh, Lone Boulevard, and there you're three or four blocks away from downtown at that corner. What about if you take from where you start with the pathway, go across? I know it's, the town has bought back the, the golf course. That's you know, the way I understand. Okay, we're not planning a path here. Okay. We're, we're talking Fine. about the, the, the cost. We're Safety. talking about the, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the boring debenture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not discussing where a path can go or how it's going to work. In answer to your second question, your second question, if there's more land annexed, mm -hmm. okay, that will have its own development agreement. Mm -hmm. There is, there we have removed the, the uh, rural residential zoning from our bylaw, from our, our, our city plan that no longer exists. So this won't happen again. So any, any further development, will have sidewalks involved, in, like it, originally. But would they bury part of our cost then? Would our taxes go down or would we develop from that? Would Well, it would have to be what the development agreement is, but it would, it would probably, the development agreement would force them to have their own sidewalks. A am I correct on that, uh, Mr. Workentine? Um If I think, if I understand you correctly, Mrs. Friesen, uh, because this local improvement plan has been advertised with only the Clear Spring Greens and Ramsgate neighborhood uh, involved today, uh, any future development wouldn't impact any proposed plan that's present uh, at this public hearing. 
So it wouldn't impact the cost at all? For them. Uh, for them or for you? No, because we would have buried the brunt of the cost already. We, we would have bought the lot. We would have paid for all that already. So they would just benefit from, from our cost. <laughs> Well, in, other, in other words, the, the question before uh, Council today and at this, uh, the topic of this public hearing is to consider this local improvement plan based on the uh, local improvement area that's been identified in the public notice. And that's only the Clear Spring Greens neighborhood. Because the way it stands now, I oppose that. Too. Okay, thank you. I just do want to remind everyone, we're talking about this project for this area and we're not talking about hypothetical pathways or other development that could happen. Okay, we, we need to stay focused on this, this, uh, this local improvement. Go ahead. Thank you, Council. My name is Derek Belinsky from 53 Carlton Drive. Uh, I'm here to object to the current plan that was proposed and mailed to the residents in the area, me being one of them. Um, one of my biggest concerns was is I've only seen one proposal, one cost, no other alternatives, a second or a third alternative as the pathway has already been discussed between two lots where the culverts run out on the park. Um, nobody's looked at the feasibility or even brought it to the residents. We, we were notified that this was the plan and how much it would cost. I'm kind of, ha I have my object objection to it for the simple fact that there was no opportunity for us as a community or as the development to actually voice our opinion first instead of having to come here and, and object to the plan that's currently put in front of us. We would enjoy to have a little more of a voice and that's my objection. Thank you. Thank you. there. I am Lisa Clark from 18 Ramsgate. I just wanted to make the point that, you know, for my family, we're a two-income family, and so we could find the money. We could somehow pull it out. I can take on another client. It's not going to sink us, but there was a point in our lives where we were a single-income family, and $100 a month would have been food out of my kids' mouths, and there are a lot of families represented like that. And I, do, I just don't even think it's, it's fair to ask people to come up with another $100 when they have kids who they need to feed and RESPs they're saving for, when they've created budgets. And this, uh, this really will just really hammer some people, and I'm concerned for them. So. Um, the, um, Councillor Penner has a question for the... For the presenter, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Uh, you referenced the cost, so I'll again uh, ask my question to you. If, yeah. if this plan was to go forward as presented, yeah. would you feel that it would be better to not have the lighting expense on this project? If that's our personally. only option. Yeah, personally. if that's our I'm only option. I'm not to speak for everybody yeah. else, but personally. Yeah, personally, it's better than nothing. Um, but I, you know, like Serg said, you know, Deerfield, money was found money was somehow found to help the community out. And I don't, I'm not objecting to $30 a month or to something. I'm not saying, you know, give us everything, but I think the number, you know, it works out to $100 per month is really unreasonable for the average family. It's really unreasonable for someone who's retired and on a budget. That amount of money for five years just isn't an option for some families. And I don't think it's fair to ask them to do it considering that we're not actually in a low tax area. Like I'm personally paying $8,700 a month taxes. I'm maintaining a well that cost me $2,500 last year. And so in addition to high property taxes, I have less services and I have the maintenance of my well. And so to add another $100 on to me is obviously very, very frustrating. Uh, but again, my concern is for the people who just can't find that money. And so I wanted to speak for them because there are people who just they don't have the money. You know, they're going to be pulling their kids out of sports to come up with that money because mom wants to stay at home with her kids. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sean Harder, 6 Slater Place. I'd also like to make an object objection uh, primarily on the basis of cost. Um, 
kind of seconding what was, was just said there, I think. Um, at least I'll speak for my wife and I, which is to say we feel we'd be fine paying for part of the cost. Um, if you guys want a number, <laughs> I would say maybe half of that, I think is something that we would be comfortable with personally. I know for every family that's a different situation. Um, uh, Damien, with respect to your question in terms of the, or the lighting issue that was brought up, um, I think that's something to, to look at. That'd be something that I would be in favor of. Um, still some concern, it's not ideal in the sense that I think it still um, remains a safety issue, not having lighting down that stretch. Um, but I think it is potentially a compromise that, that should be looked at, uh, in my opinion. So. My name is Edward Fraze, 6 McFarland Place, and I would just like to second what uh, has been said already, especially from Mr. Jolliker here too, so that's my objection. If, if I may, Mr. Mayor? Yes, you can. Go Thank ahead. you very much to the presenter. Um, I'm, this will be a common, a common theme here because there has been asked for feedback, yeah. and I want there to be feedback, so uh, it could be expected that I will probably raise my hand uh, every time to question this, but if this park was to, if the, this was to proceed as presented, would you prefer the lighting to not be added an added expense? Keeping in mind, I will add this too, that the path that it leads to also is not lighted in AD Penner Park. So it would be a lighted path to a non-lighted path. Yes, I drive, I drive my bike to work in summer just out of pure recreation body movement. I, I have already, yeah, I have to supply my own lighting, my own reflectors, everything, because I don't want to be driven over. Um, yeah, I would, I would be in favor of, yes, not light compared to not path, but yeah, preferably light too, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Len Letkeman, 74 Carlton Drive. Uh, I'd like to, uh, Mr. Penner, I would just like to, in regards to the lighting, uh, first of all, there's no, no street lighting on that road. It's pitch black. And so if there would be street lighting on the, on the road itself, there would be enough light for the path which would be beside it. But right now, it's just black. So you would need something for, for safety reasons why. And I also object to the proposal. Thank you. Uh, Dean Bueller, 66 Carlton Drive. Um, I just want to say I do object to uh, Plan 2022-2. Um, I would be in favor of paying a quarter of what is uh, put forward today. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bueller, would you be in favor if this was to move forward of not having lighting? Podium, please not having lighting included in this project, considering that it does not go to a lighted path. Yeah, sorry, as, as, as said, uh, non-lighted path onto a non-lighted path, yes, I would approve that, yeah. Thank you very much. Richard Martin, 30 Slater Place. We just moved uh, into town and uh, have had buyer's remorse ever since, especially since I got this letter. I mean, taxes are way higher than what we ever used to in country. This is uh, unreal. And then you want to put $5,000. Being retired, where am I going to find that money? I'm totally opposed to the whole thing. And should you build, where's the 50-year plan? There's no continuance. If you're going to build it, then build it so that you use the walkway or the culvert that you put in. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Elma Friesen, I'm at 13 Ramsgate. Um, just the question with respect to the lighting, I think it's a Band-Aid solution if we put the walkway in now and spend money already, let's just put the lighting in right away because it could potentially raise other safety concerns in the future. There is no lighting right now between Ramsgate and Fairway Close and that, that area already has a bit of a, a pathway there. The other thing is, um, 
Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I just wanna say that when I, and I'm a realtor as well, I see property taxes across the city all the time. When I look at a house exactly the same as mine, elsewhere in Steinbeck where they have full services, I pay the same taxes, exactly the same. There's no difference and I have less services now. So why do I not get to benefit from a sidewalk that would connect us to the city? Um, my property value doesn't go up if I spend an additional $5,000. So I'm opposed. Thank you. Uh, John Beckering from 86 Carlton Drive. I'm just wondering if there was possible that they could actually just put a four-way stop sign instead of even going th buying through that lot there where you purchased, instead of just go straight out uh, Lang, right onto Cross Park, and could they not put the path on the other side of the road all the way along the telephone poles right to the golf course and then come across at that crosswalk and then just put a four-way stop sign? Because right now, going down yeah, Park... Sir, oh, we're this is the plan we have in front of us. Yeah. This is the plan we're talking about. We're, we're not talking about hypothetical or... I'm talking more about cost. The cost is, like most people feel here, is way too high. And for one thing, if you put it... You, you want to get a path out, and that's what I want to do, is get a path out of our development, because you can't bike on park. It's just too crazy and, uh, and dark and... Uh, so I'm just wondering, does the city own the property on the north side of park? Instead of running the path on the south side of park all the way along the golf course, bring it on the other side of the road to bring it all the way to the golf course. I don't think we, uh, we the, own the, the north side of park. No, that's matter of fact, part of that's the arm of Hanover. That's not even uh, city property. Like, so how much do we have from the road to the north? Like nothing. Nothing. Do we do we have anything at all from the on the north side of the park? north side of park? Uh, that entire road allowance is taken up by the ditch, and the property line starts at the uh, top of the ditch slope. So there is no possible way to put sidewalk on the north side of park road. That's another narrow uh, road allowance. There. Correct. Yeah. Well, the reason why I'm speaking about that also, also putting a four-way stop sign because I, I live on Carleton, I gotta make that And sir, corner. we're not talking about four-way stop sign, we're talking about this sidewalk. Right, but that's gonna tie you into the path. Instead of going through that empty lot, where, or the lot that you purchased, why don't we just have it where the bikes come out on a four-way stop sign, then to get onto the path along that ditch? Okay, sir. Yes. I told everyone, we're talking about this Local improvement. Right. Okay. Oh, I disagree. Uh, that, if that's okay, what you want to hear, reject, then that's... Because we're not talking about putting up stop signs. We're, I'm giving suggestions. That's a different meeting. Okay? okay. We're talking about this. You're objecting to this? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, right. and I thought we were suggestions aren't welcome or... Uh, uh, well, we want to stay... We need to stay on focus here, and we're okay. talking about the local improvement yeah. of that we've... That we've okay. uh, designed here. Yeah. Another time, you can come as a delegation. Okay. Whatever you can, you can share. We're we're open to hearing. All right. Tonight, it's about this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Timo Bullard. I live at 29 Slater Place, and I'd like to object uh, to this proposal uh, due to the cost. And uh, most of it has been said already, but I would like to know, or I had the impression that uh, there's no uh, available, available uh, cash reserves whatsoever from the city. So, uh, Councillor Ebert, you have a question? No, I'm just, oh. he's looking at me, I'm just addressing him to you. Okay. So because uh, a while back we got a letter that was a citywide uh, uh, tax increase proposal in, in regards to, uh, I believe it was Croker Avenue, that needs some repaving. And then later, I read in line that uh, eight hundred thousand dollar was found by uh, in cash reserves by the city. So why is, why wasn't that uh, be put to use instead, or uh, at least a portion of it? I think I don't I don't know what you mean by the eight hundred thousand in cash reserves. I believe that was maybe the doubling of the tax 
ga gas tax? Uh, there, uh, I guess uh, the cost was initially, pe initially pegged at $3 million to do oh, some, for, some yes. yeah. for some pipe work and asphalt whatsoever. And then uh, I guess that was kind of trashed because uh, in regards to the tax increase, but because the 800,000 was used uh, towards uh, that project. Mr. Workney, can you speak to that at all? Uh, I perhaps could answer very generally. Uh, every year, uh, council goes through a very in-depth budget and review process. Administration recommends a proposed budget for a variety of things uh, between operating, capital programs, uh, debt repayment, etc. Uh, with the overall plan uh, that was presented to Council for a variety of infrastructure projects, Council decided that this was the funding uh, plan that was to be brought forward. And uh, while there were other possible ways that the City could have proposed the plan to be prepared, uh, Council uh, ultimately decided that uh, a proposal uh, for the project to be funded entirely by the neighborhood uh, was appropriate and that's the subject of the public hearing today. And uh, one uh, thing I'd like to mention, I mean, we get it that most of the uh, benefit will be the, going towards Clear Spring, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't say 100% because I, I, during the summer, uh, I see a lot of people actually just taking a, a walk or a jog across the along the to all, Old Tom Road, whatsoever. So I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, Clear Spring Green is the, the full uh, beneficiary of that. So I, based on that cost, 600000 And I, was, I would just like to know, it was it just uh, an estimate based on uh, by a city engineer, or was it actually a contractor came in and uh, gave a proposal? Because uh, for, for me, $600,000 for uh, 800 meters of asphalt and a bit of lighting, seems quite steep. Well, uh, thank you for your question on that. Yes, this is just a preliminary costing. This is the 625 is just what it could be. We don't know, we don't have any tenders back yet. It could all change. It could be a different number. Even the lighting could be a different number. Normally when we, before we start cutting things, we get our, we have our plan, we have this meeting for a local improvement. Then the tenders go out and at that point, we decide if we need to cut anything, because depending on what the tenders come out at. So we, the, the project price could change according to tenders. It could go lower. But we like to put our tenders out early, and we often get much better pricing. But to be safe, we always price it with some cushion. Right? So that, that I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. But I, I think we should still work on as far as uh, getting uh, money together from elsewhere. I mean, we can, I, I assume we can, or should pay a, a portion of it, even though I'd be looking at probably $6,000 in taxes after. So I, I, I think with the city growing and the tax base growing too, uh, we should be able to pull some money together from elsewhere. You, uh, I've got a, da uh, Councillor Damien Penner has a question for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, same question that I've posed to the previous people that have presented with regards to the lighting at the path. Uh, as far as the lighting goes, um, I couldn't care less uh, about the lighting, but uh, a bit of a Band-Aid solution, so might as well do it right. At, even if the plan proceeds as, fall, as presented at, with the additional cost, is, do you feel that? Well, I mean, if, I, I think the cost needs to be uh, brought down. And uh, I mean, if taking out the lighting is an option, but I, I, I don't think that's the right decision to do, so. Thank you. Is there anyone? Okay. Uh, Jesse Adams, Five Slater Place. Um, I think we're getting kind of off off of what kind of what was proposed by Surge with uh, with uh, Deerfield not paying anything for their path. I think we just keep bringing up this uh, no lighting or not doing it properly or whatever else. I, th I think we're getting away from the fact that they didn't pay for their path and we're supposed to be paying for our path. It's the same thing. They want to get out of their neighborhood safely. We want to get out of our neighborhood safely. I don't want to have to pay a whole bunch of money for it. I don't feel I should because they didn't have to. I pay a lot of money in taxes. I don't get a lot for it. And I feel that this is ridiculous. I'm paying for it already. Plain and simple. Thank you. Uh, 
Christine Dean, 32 Mooney Avenue. Sorry about any terminology that I may use that isn't Canadian. Um, my, uh, I object to the cost completely. Um, like everyone says, the budget's away high and everything. Um, but looking at the uh, proposed map and everything, the lighting situation, if you're wanting to go there, you, you've bought this plot of land that you're going to put a little path behind X amount of houses, which to me, on an evening or whatever at dusk, our children decide that they want to go off to the park or whatever, or we let them. Um, it needs light in there, no matter what. Sorry for the residents that it's going to light your bedrooms and everything and shine into your beds, bedrooms or whatever. But children need to be safe down that s little alleyway. I was going to say still a little alleyway. The alleyway that you're proposing once you've gone and fenced off the uh, golf course and behind the houses and everything, um, the children walking down there, it's not going to be safe. In my, this is my opinion. Come from England, I've seen this, and we've had, you know, it's more built up than it is here. My granddaughter, I want her to be totally safe. I need her... The reason we moved from Clearfield was to move here so she had a better chance to grow and, you know, build a community of her own and things and be safe. Um, at the moment, she's, what, seven years old in a couple of weeks. I didn't let her, you know, just turn around and go around the corner to, you know, said friends or whatever, just because... People are using our uh, estate as a quick alleyway round, getting past all the traffic lights and everything. If, for example, she wanted to go up to Ramsgate, I'm totally grateful that you're going to put this little walkway in between Ramsgate and, is it Fairview? I'm not usually up that section. That needs lighting because, heaven forbid, you know, we've got these drug dealers, we've got... All the, I'm doing the negative, I do apologise, but you've got your druggies, you've got whatever else, the various men lurking around, and women that are abusive, that can use that as a, yes, it's basically like a minefield, you know, a little, get my tongue around my teeth. It's going to draw them into that sort of little alleyway you know it, it, our children need protecting because of these things so we need the lighting um also what is the purpose of us paying to go along the golf course yes i can that's fine but from the golf course you can actually skim through to get to ad penner park if you want to why are we paying if i've looked at the map right to get a path around the golf um oh what's it called the golf hot house you know that new restaurant clubhouse. thank you the clubhouse why are we putting a little path with extra expenses to go around that golf that golf house to clubhouse sorry for the sake of it when you can literally go past on the path from the, uh, got f the clubhouse in front of the uh, aqua centre, which has got a path, and then walk like you'd normally do to that little, you know, bridge. Um, so, you know, like I say, I, c I can't see the point of that still little path there. Um, and also, I wouldn't realistically want my grandchild to turn around and have to walk all the way through to go to the uh, aqua centre, to then go all the way through the paths of the park to get onto Lowen, to come all the way back along Lowen to go up Hesler, then trying to get to Clear, is it Clear Springs School. 
Okay, yeah. 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 You see what I mean? Our children are going way out of the way. So basically, they're still not going to go all the way that way. They're still going to cut up old Tom and what have you. And yes, I can't see why we didn't have a path when we went and resurfaced old Tom. But that's whatever you lot do. I'm no good at this type of thing. But like I say, you need at least lighting down any alleyways that you're proposing. And it's a job lot going against, you know, across the golf course. But I'm opposed to this. I'm opposed to the costs. And thank you for putting up with me. Is there anyone else with questions or objections? Okay. Can I ask one more? <clears throat> I mentioned prior about the gas tax, but I never asked the question, could it have been used? Is it, was it possible? Is it, was it, would it have been, would this have been within that scope of that additional tax, cat, uh, tax amount? I'll ask that question to uh, Mr. Wargantine. Yes, it is. It's within that, it's within that tax. So, so this, the first I'd heard of it was in April of 2019 where they were, the headline was city in no hurry to spend new federal grants. That was the headline on Stomach Online. Uh, additional gas tax, a surprise. Additional gas tax double, $423,000. We came in July posing a serious issue, like an actual serious issue. It's not even about, uh, you know, yeah, we just wanna, we want everything handed to us. It's actually a serious safety issue. Uh, and then we see this. Actually, when I read that on Stomach Online, you, when it was announced in, I think, August, three weeks after we were here, in July, I think August 12th was the date that it was announced on Stomach Online that he had received that grant money. Um, and so I thought, this is it. I thought this was gonna be it. I thought, uh, hallelujah, we got money. There at least we can maybe get something going with this plan because it was on your radar that it was gonna be a serious concern. And then it was, it was put to asphalt paving, re resurfacing. Not new streets, not paving there's a couple streets in town that haven't even been paved yet. I wouldn't mention those, but uh, not even it, repaving. It's a serious issue. It's a serious concern. You know, and when I hear that it could have been used, some of it, I, I don't expect $423,000 to just be thrown at us. I mean, I understand there's, there's other areas to use that, but that could have helped. It was there. It was, it's right there. You know, and like Jesse said, uh, and no offense, Damien, but uh, we're talking about, you know, it seems like a case of shoot high and try to settle low, you know, when we're bringing up the point, like, can we remove the lighting, can we remove the lighting? I appreciate that you guys included it all in the package. Fencing, obviously, we need. Lighting, nice to have, like somebody mentioned, those street lights. Like, when you go further from AD Penner Park to Safeway, there's street lights there, there's more traffic, it's a bit safer, there's no street lights there. But between the golf course and, and, and where it, Jogs on the Clear Spring green, Greens are from fairway close to Ram's Gate. Uh, it'll, it'll be dark. It'll be really dark. So, so I appreciate that you guys included that because that would have been something that afterwards it would have been an afterthought saying, hey, we didn't realize how dark this is going to be at, if you're going around at night. Uh, but there was money there. There was something. Something that the taxpayers of Steinbeck didn't have to pay. Uh, something that the taxpayers in our community didn't have to pay. Even if we remove the lighting, I did the quick numbers, we're still looking at a base cost of $2,800. Base plus interest, right, so you add that over, so you're an extra $800, let's say. So $3,600, even if we remove the street lighting. From what I'm hearing, that's still too much. It's still too much, you know? It, it's, it's tough. So when I hear that there's, and, and I don't even reference, like I don't even know what this, but um, I don't know if you'll remember this, Michael, I'll address you, but back in that same article, City in No Hurry to Spend You Federal Grants, uh, there was reference that there was, uh, meanwhile, the provincial government announced a new grant program that will give the city 200000 per year. Earmarked for nothing, it was to be pushed to next year. It was, it was actually put in the general reserve, it said. So could that have been used? Is that something, that it, like, as far as the grant, the provincial grant goes, is that something that they would have allowed us to use for, for sidewalks, pathways? I don't know, maybe Troy has to answer that one too, I don't know. If, uh, if I, my memory serves me correctly, we, we did use that, and did we not use that for repairs on Main Street? Uh, Mr. Workney? Uh, generally, that particular grant, uh, 250000 that the city did receive, was a reduction from the annual amount of 400000 the city previously had received until the provin uh, provincial government changed the program. 
that particular grant fund uh, is to be directed to critical infrastructure needs to be determined by the city. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. Thank you. So, so we're still looking at something, though. That's something that could possibly help us as residents. You know, I don't think that we should be. Uh, I don't think it's fair to pitch this and then, as, you know, I, I talked first and I, I said some things and then I think it was, who was next, Gord I think it was? And as soon as he mentioned uh, he wasn't happy with the cost and then it felt like jump on, how can we reduce this, we can remove the lighting and lower the cost, I don't think that's the right solution. I don't. I think, it's, I think it should all be done in one package and I think there's money there that could, that could be earmarked to lower the cost for us. You know, like Lisa said, you know, some people may be able to do it easier than others but a lot can't. And I'm sure some people are willing to pay a portion of that, but 3,000, 3,600, 2,800, 5,200, whatever it ends up being, it's a lot. You know, if we were in the $1,500 range or something, or whatever, we're all giving something, maybe, maybe, but we're, we're far apart, I think. We're far apart, and especially when I hear those things that could be done, could have been done. So that's all I just wanted to add anyways, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have if I may, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Mr. Jolliger, uh, I do apologize if the way that I was uh, approaching this was uh, taken in ill fate. Uh, however, I do have a question for you. We were asked if where was the consultation, and, and this is the point of the consultation, so uh, we are trying to ask the questions to get more information from, from you as, as was requested, so uh, I do apologize if it was taken yeah, ill. But, no, I get that. Uh, <clears throat> so the question is, do you, do we, can we continue to ask questions, or can we not? For, for myself? Yeah, yeah, you know. To, to anybody, no, to anybody yeah. presenting. You can ask questions. I'm just saying uh, the, the, the gist of it seems shoot high, settle low. And when I see a 985 meter, six and a half foot wide concrete path with lighting connecting Hespler to Deerfields, it's a little hard for me to understand. And maybe for other people, that would be a little bit hard to understand. We're looking at less meters. It's wider, yes. It'll be three meters instead of uh, 2.5 meters. Uh, but it's going to be asphalt, which is fine. They have lighting. We're posing lighting. They don't have a fence. They don't need a fence. Uh, the school has a fence, but, but we'll need a fence. I get that. We don't want to get hit in the head with a, with a golf ball. Um, but that was done for them within five years, completion, start to finish. By previous council, it was doable. I think we have an option to do it again. I think it can be done. I really do. I, know, I don't see all the numbers. I understand you guys have a difficult decision uh, to make or difficult decisions to make. Budgeting is... You know, you have a certain budget to work with. You know, I, we see the headlines too. Zero tax increase for the year. That's great. Appreciate your work. Like, that's awesome, you know? Zero net tax increase. Great. We, we still pay a lot of taxes, but when I see stuff like this, it seems like it's possible. I don't know. I just, I really think, and like I mentioned in the end of my thing, we're not here just wagging our fingers at you guys. We need your help. We need your help to do this. It's simple as that. And, yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thanks very much. Is there anyone else with uh, questions or objections? Hi, I'm Arianna Dirksen from 70 Carlton. And um, this feels like a bit of a lesser question, but just so something I want to know. Um, when I look at the map where the drawing is um, along Old Tom, just that portion, that's the only portion I'm talking about. Um, there's a tree line there. So where, where is this pathway going? Where's the fence going? I just want to know what you guys are thinking. Well, the tree line's there. I'll, I'll have uh, Mr. Horkening speak to that because he's been working more with the engineers and where the pathway will go on Park Road. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. if uh, the sketch that was attached to the public notice uh, has indicated the proposed pathway location uh, with the yellow line uh, and it's the section along Park Road that you were asking about? Oh, sorry, yeah, Park Road, not Old Town. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, the uh, proposed location is uh, in the public road allowance, uh, which runs along, or sorry, just uh, on the edge of the existing property next to the public road allowance, uh, which is represented right now by that line of trees. Uh, the, uh, I believe it's that row of spruce trees, uh, which is right next to the road. Uh, those uh, are planned to be removed, and that would make, uh, make space for uh, the installation of the sidewalk. Okay. okay. And um, second question, what kind of fence are we talking about here? What is proposed is a 10-foot chain link fence. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
have a question for your administration. Uh, go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just while we have the map up uh, for Mr. Warkington, could you just clearly state why did the city purchase the lot at 42 Carlton as opposed to what's been suggested, uh, a pathway between 34 and 38? Uh, in plain, or I guess in simple terms, is the uh, possible route location using the public reserve piece, uh, which is at the northwest corner of the Clear Spring Greens development, was not seen as a, a feasible option. As I mentioned earlier, that is the primary drainage outlet for all the stormwater runoff for the entire development. Uh, there has already been uh, uh, overcharging of that uh, particular drainage system, uh, particularly during uh, significant rainfall events. And uh, any work that uh, would have impacted um, the, uh, the current drainage patterns uh, had the possibility of negatively impacting uh, what is already a, a bit of a challenging situation, especially when there's, uh, when there's significant rainfall events. And uh, not only that, but the, the, the cost of uh, any box culverts uh, that would be needed uh, if that was to be used as a potential route uh, for a pathway uh, was seen to be cost prohibitive compared to the option that was chosen. Just a follow-up to administration. Uh, Mr. Workington, assuming that the uh, sidewalk goes along Park Road as proposed here, was there any other feasible option uh, to have a pathway that would can, that would go along the way does other than purchasing that lot. Uh, you mean for this particular? Yes, for this uh, particular. Assuming it goes along Park Road East as here. Uh, well, as uh, as this lot and uh, one other that is currently uh, located on Carlton Drive, those were the only two uh, other uh, access point options. Uh, so this was pretty much the only option that was available. Is there anyone else wishing to have questions or that has any questions or wishing to object? Is there anyone else wishing to uh, object? Hi there. Uh, Joelle Wilcox, 6 Ramsgate. And I object for all the obvious reasons that these guys stated already. <coughs> Excuse me. And for me, I'm excited to hear about the walkways because right now my kids wait for a bus in a ditch. So it is a safety issue. Um, I do feel sorry for the people who back onto this golf course. I'm from Winnipeg originally and I've been in this situation before. The minute you put up a fence right there and put in a pathway, their homes are easy targets for break-ins. So without lighting, that's a huge issue right there. And like Christine mentioned already, I wouldn't walk down there if there was no lighting. So for my children, which I have six, um, the pathways are great, um, but I too was misled like another gentleman here when we purchased our home. We were told Old Tom would be paved immediately. It wasn't. The sidewalks would be put in. And I think Mr. Adams clearly stated it perfectly. We already pay for these. Like, my taxes are 7000 I've had my homes broken into numerous times, my cars. So lighting is an issue for us. And I feel that it's a total safety concern without it. But um, I hope when you speak of lighting, you're talking more of just when you talked about old Tom, more than just the lights you put at Park Road and old Tom. Because although we appreciate the lower speed as well, that's still a super highway going down there. And um, I pray one day one of my kids don't get, get hurt. So I'm totally against this for Every, for the reasons everybody else is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shannon Friesen. I own 9 Fairway and 94 Carlton. Is this going to be implemented on every property so I'd be responsible for $10,000? Yeah, correct. It is every, it's by parcel. Yeah. It's by parcel. 
Well, I think everyone else has voiced how much we pay already. But I can't afford to sell my house. This would make it almost impossible because nobody's going to want to buy property that costs so much in taxes. So I obviously object. And I think, Earl, you know our situation too, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else with questions or wanting to object? I, th I think we've had, uh, I think everyone's had a good chance. I'll ask one more time. Is there anyone with questions or wanting to object to this file? Okay, seeing none, I will uh, close the public hearing and open the council meeting again. Council, how would you like to proceed? Uh, Councilor Pinner. Motion to approve as presented. We have a seconder. Uh, Councilor Swakestra, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is by no means an easy decision for us as council, and uh, regrettably, uh, uh, it is one that we do have to make. Um, it's important to look at the terminology that's used for the form of this funding. It's a local improvement plan. This was a project that was requested exclusively by Clear Spring Green Neighbourhood uh, without any external funding available for the project that we did try to, try to find th through grants. Uh, I agree with the residents that this is something that should have been planned for when this Rural Residential Service Zoning was approved. There is good reason that the zoning no longer exists because of the difficulties like this that arise in the future. However, this should have been foreseen by previous councils that this request would come up, which is why we as council approved that the purchase of the lot should not be the burden of the citizens and will be borne by the city. Questions have rightly come up regarding the necessity of purchasing the lot and during the many times we looked at this and re-looked at and again looked at it, we questioned this and were given alternate plans. However, as there are already drainage difficulties on the corner of Carlton, adding any, any obstructions would only make the problem worse and were more costly than the lot. And this is what we were presented. We can only go off of the numbers that were presented. Uh, if when councils go rogue, it does not work well. We need to go with what we are presented by the professionals. We as council have brought this up at every single study session we have had so far. And I truly feel we have exhausted all of our efforts in trying to find an alternative plan that would be more affordable. Questions have been asked of the breakdown of the cost of the project and it is as follows. The 200, there's 270,000. Uh, allocated towards asphalt pathing, 78,000 towards fencing, 208,000 towards lighting, and then 69, an additional 69,000 to uh, other items such as site prep. Uh, with uh, the city's contribution of the lot, this works out to an approximate 80-20 cost sharing. So there is, there is a cost share from the city of about 20%, and then we do also have to, I, I feel, factor the uh, negotiation with the, the flying golf course to be able to secure land there to be able to run that path as well. Uh, to try and some, answer some of the other questions presented tonight, this project will be going to tender and this price is our engineer's best estimate for the expense. We have been fortunate in the last year of having virtually every project come under tender, but that was when we were strategic of when we put our projects forward and putting them early in the year before construction schedules begin to fill up. Uh, that will unfortunately not be able to happen if this goes to a municipal board hearing as the project will likely be delayed for at least another year. And the municipal board usually generally takes in, uh, six to eight months or longer to render a decision. There's been reference that the cost difference in capital development fees towards sidewalks for new lots is significantly less than this project in some of our letters of objection. However, that is not comparing apples to apples in any way. New lots receive sidewalks on lot frontages that are designed and planned to have the paths installed at a later date. That is by no means what this project is. Finally, I will say to you, Council, I truly sympathize with the residents. I truly sympathize with the residents that do not want to see this on their tax roll. I do. I truly do. This is not a cheap connecting path because we are after the fact going on already developed land that has no profile to have a path on it. However, I also have to say that while these residents do not want this on their tax roll, as the residents 
the primary residents that will be using the vast majority of this, neither would residents that are nowhere near this project. This is a connecting path that connects their homes to the rest of Steinbeck and is not part of a larger walking path network. It serves one purpose, and that is to connect the homes of those paying for the path with a dedicated pedestrian trail. This is a project that was requested by the residents of Clear Spring Greens, and we as council did our duty to them and acted on their request. There is still ability for this project to not go forward by the means of a municipal board hearing, or two thirds of the affected residents be objecting before a third reading, and I do strongly encourage them to look at these options if they do not want this to proceed. However, I will end with a caution, and it's just a reality that if this path does not go through as presented, I do not see there being a connecting path being built in any foreseeable future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Swakespeare. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is certainly not one of the easier public hearings that we've had, and uh, we know that there are some, uh, some challenges, and there's hard conversations. I know that uh, many of us did, uh, during the campaign, speak to people in the area. I had campaigned uh, in the area myself. And I just want to mention just a few things during uh, right now that were the same that I mentioned to people when I was out the door, uh, because I believe in being straightforward and candid. And uh, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to say here, as far as some of my comments, isn't going to be much different than what I've already said to many of the people when I campaigned. One of the things is that the rural residential zoning category uh, does create challenges because of the fact that it is uh, that the neighborhoods are built at uh, with different at a different standard That is a reality of the zoning. I do not believe it is a, a good zoning within the city That is why uh, we've removed that zoning category future neighborhoods will not be able to have this option Because the reality is is that when you live in a city as we've heard eloquently expressed and appropriately So when you live in this within a city you expect urban services you know, everyone who lives in a city should have city water, city sewer, sidewalks, connecting paths. That's why we don't have this category anymore. It should not have been put in. It was put in with the best of intentions many years ago by previous councils who wanted to create lots that were more affordable that at the time that they were, although now, as we've heard very clearly, the cost really isn't that much different, which is another good reason not to have the zoning category in the first place. And that is something I, I stated very clearly to people that we are dealing with a historic challenge here. A second thing that I said very clearly and that we see here today is that the cost of a pathway is very expensive. And I had said this, in fact, frankly, I remember talking to some people, I thought it would be a million dollars. So this is actually cheaper than what I thought because of how long this pathway is, because of the fact that, uh, uh, that, it's, that the pathway is it's just simply this area is not designed for it. It is not a typical sidewalk. This is completely unlike any other sidewalk that we, uh, that we build within the city. And so, Another reality is that the pathway is only going to go one direction. We're not going to build several, you know, seven hundred or six hundred thousand dollar sidewalks. That's not going to happen. And so it's not going to both go along Park Road and along Old Tom Road. It's not going to do both. It, it's going to be one or the other. You're not, we're not going to be able to do both with, uh, unless we're going to have an even more prohibitive cost, which we clearly don't want to do. And a number, a number, another thing that I said to many people is that the neighborhood will pay a significant cost. Why? Because this is a sidewalk that primarily, that is, is the result of requests of the neighborhood. The neighborhood has requested it strongly. We've heard that clearly. And so it is a local improvement for that very specific region. Uh, reason, yes, there are some people outside of the area that will likely use the sidewalk. And that is why the city is paying for a portion of the cost. The city is paying for the lot, which we've heard very clearly, if you're going to have a pathway connecting along Park Road, this is the only way to do it. The other option that was mentioned, we, we looked at that option. It doesn't work for drainage reasons. It's, it, 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 the, the cost would be too high in terms of trying to deal with some of those challenges. And so obviously when you're purchasing a lot, you can't have a public announcement that we're thinking about purchasing a lot because then the price would have been even higher than what we ended up purchasing for. Um, that is the unfortunate reality of, uh, of that. And so when we look at this here, the, uh, there is no perfect option. There is none. Um, we recognize that there is, uh, that there is significant, uh, you know, that there is certainly a benefit from having a connecting path to the rest of the city. Um, the reality is, and we've heard it from the, even some of the objections here today, not everyone is on the same page in terms of what's going to happen with the sidewalk. If we simply threw it open and said, there's going to be a community session and we're going to hash out what's going to happen, we would not have consensus. We've heard some objectors here saying they don't want it along Park Road, they want it along Old Tom Road. We can't do both. Like, there's no way we're going to do both. 
Uh, we've heard some, uh, some that want the lighting and that some that don't. Well, we can't both have the lighting and also not have the lighting at the same time. After due consideration, uh, and certainly here, after hearing many of the comments here, I tend to lean that uh, that it makes sense that it makes sense to have that it makes sense to have the lighting. That there are some safety concerns that have been raised, which is why, incidentally, our professional staff recommended it in the first place. Um, and so, some questions have been raised as far as you know, the city could just take money elsewhere. We could take money from the gas tax. We could take money from these other things. And yes, that is possible. The city could take money from some of these other. Uh, some of those other uh, uh, grants that the city's received, the city could take money from a reserve fund. Every dollar that we take from those other funds means that that's not a dollar that's spent on the general city improvements. That, that uh, increase that we put to the asphalt overlay program, this is not a program that we do just for the sake of doing it. It's an important part of our infrastructure renewal within the city. Back when the city constructed the uh, Stymic Aquatic Center, city council put, for several years, put the uh, asphalt overlay program on hold. We felt the effects of that for many years afterwards because that asphalt overlay program extends the life of roadways by 15, 20 years easily, substantially uh, improving the quality of the roadway and meaning that we don't have to pay even more to do the repairs later. So the reality is the gas tax had been remaining at a pretty similar level for a long time. When we received the increase for the gas tax, we decided to put it toward the asphalt overlay program because the reality is is that the asphalt overlay, we were able to do less and less every year. It was getting to the point where we were doing basically half a street in this section and we had to do the next part the next year. And so because of the fact that we had already designated that the gas tax would be used for our asphalt overlay program, it made sense on a citywide basis because it's important for us to remember we make decisions for the city as a whole. And looking at the city as a whole, the whole community, it makes sense for us to put the additional gas tax money into the asphalt overlay program to benefit the infrastructure to the city as a whole. Now, I recognize the cost here is significant. And there's unfortunately, there's not, many, there's not really many ways around it because it is an expensive sidewalk. If it went along Old Tom Road, it would have been even more expensive because of the, because of the challenges along that pathway. And so the reality is, is that if this goes ahead today, the neighborhood will have another opportunity to object if they choose to do so. Uh, there is the opportunity to, you, there will be a letter that will go to everyone who's objected here today. There will be an opportunity to, uh, uh, to further object to the municipal board. If there are at least 10% of the parcel owners that object, which should be about 15 in this case, if they choose to continue their objection, that's an automatic municipal board hearing. So there will be another opportunity to be heard. If two thirds of the neighbors object, then the project is completely dead at that point. And so the neighborhood, if there's an overwhelming sentiment in the neighborhood that this should not go ahead, the neighborhood gets the final say. If there is an overwhelming percentage that, uh, that doesn't want it to go ahead, that is, then that project, the project can be ended. After looking at all the options, this is what the city has, uh, has, has put together as the best of a number of very difficult choices that were before us. There's no option that's going to make everyone happy, and, uh, but I will be candid, I am not in favor of increasing the amount that everyone else pays to allocate toward this. We are already taking a portion from general revenues to go toward a portion of this project, and unfortunately, because this is an unusually expensive sidewalk that goes far beyond what sidewalks typically are, um, the majority of the cost in this case is cover is is borne by the neighborhood. Assuming it goes ahead, assuming it goes ahead today, and then assuming that uh, that it would go ahead uh, past the the municipal board hearing. So I, I recognize the concerns people have. Uh, we did give this consideration. Uh, Councillor uh, Penner, I think, had uh, outlined this quite well. And this is the uh, this is the difficult choice that we've come to. And uh, we need to be candid about what the what the options are that we're facing. Thank you, Councillor Swagstra. Is there anything else further of council? Councillor Seaman. I respectfully disagree. <clears throat> I think one of the key things uh, the residents of Clear Spring Greens is, is uh, they asked council for this uh, pathway, but I don't think they asked as much as they reminded council what our obligation is to the community and to the residents of this community. I agree with Councillor Swagstra that uh, what is the burden on the rest of our uh, community in this regard. Uh, pathways, I've uh, been focused on pathways for all the years that I've been on council and prior to that I was part of the, uh, the initial pathway that was built 
down number 12 highway in uh, 1981 so that we could access our newly built outdoor pool at that time. Uh, I could go through the whole history of, of all the different pathways that uh, we have promoted and uh, all the different things that we've done, but this is the first time that we're asking residents from any area to pay the majority of the cost of a pathway to connect them to our community. We're creating a us versus them uh, place here where uh, everybody else can get in the, on their bicycle and travel anywhere on Steinbeck or walk or run or jog, but not the people from Clear Spring Greens because we're denying them that right. If we allow this to go ahead and, it, and because of cost, if, if it gets denied simply because of the cost, we're denying them that right as well as, as members of our community. Uh, the last three pathways built in Steinbeck, a bush farm pathway through a forest on the west side of Steinbeck and uh, the two uh, pathways in, uh, in Deerfield are, are uh, limestone pathways with no lighting and they both go through, they all go through uh, bushed areas. So uh, I would uh, really, I'd, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion yet or at least propose it and if I get a seconder then we can speak to it. But uh, on the campaign trail last fall, uh, I was at many of the homes also in the Clear Spring Greens and I heard many different stories and we heard it today as well where people had to put their bicycles in their van so that they could drive to the park so their children could ride the bike at the pump park because they couldn't get there any other way. And uh, yes, this solves the issue. If, we sp if they each spend uh, $5,000 then that solves that problem except that's putting a financial burden that nobody else has had to put on any of the families in Steinbeck. And uh, that $100 a month is important. We heard that from a number of uh, people that is critical on how, uh, on, on how this moves forward. I think it is critical uh, that this moves forward. We were part of the delegation on, uh, I, when we first got on council in, uh, in 2006, uh, there was a delegation that appeared before council uh, due to the safety concerns of uh, the, the residents, the only way they could get to town was down the, on the shoulder of the 52 highway. So we did come up with that plan for the uh, pathway uh, from Hespler to Deerfield. We bumped that project a year ahead because we got a federal grant and we did light it because there were concerns at that time. We have no other pathway has lights on it at this point. Even the ones all the way through Georgetown doesn't have light. I, I appreciate the fact that uh, there's concerns and uh, fear over darkness. I think one of the ways that we can do that is by putting street lights down uh, Park Road as was suggested. Uh, that would give lighting uh, to the pathway uh, as needed as well. But uh, the, uh, so at this point, I'll come back with an amendment yet, but uh, I think that uh, each of us, if we lived in green, uh, Clear Spring Greens, we would react negatively as well to a city council that would impose a thousand dollars a year for us on a roadway. Uh, go ahead, Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, just a, count, a question to Councillor Siemens: What are you proposing we do? I, I'll wait, but I will propose an amendment yet. Okay. Any other comments? Councillor Hebert. I'd like to, Mr. Mayor, yes. I'd like to start off by thanking all of you people for coming in here, for taking time, having thought out this issue, having discussed it with other people in the community, and you see, see the seriousness of the safety for your children and others using that area and wanting to come to Steinbeck. My campaign, I said I'd work hard for you people to get uh, a pathway. I didn't ever mention what the cost would be, but I said that I'd campaign hard. I see your area as the, the pathways, I look at pathways and, and like has been presented, are you benefiting from this within your own subdivision or is it tying you people to the rest of, and I, pardon my, Comment when I say you people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about. 
but, but tying the rest of you people, the community <laughs> into Steinbeck. And I think all of you want to be part of Steinbeck. You're paying hard taxes, and you don't have that same privilege that other kids do in the uh, community. Yes, that subdivision in, went in prior to probably most of us being on council here. And had the lots been $5,000 more and this been included in that pathway, it definitely would have uh, resolved the issue. We wouldn't be sitting here and probably all of you would have bought your lots. But unfortunately, the developer at the time and uh, maybe part of the city, it should have been included and wasn't. So uh, I thank you for, uh, for coming here. Is it, a, is it a big burden for you people, the extra $5,000? Absolutely. No question about it. I know if any of us had to add another $1,000 to our taxes every year, uh, we would be saying something too. But at the end of the day, this is a pathway, and what is the position of council at this time? Not to go through with something, or do we... Or do we go through go through with this, or do we go through with nothing? And that is the resolution before us. So, uh, I'm not saying which way I'm going to vote at this time. I'm saying there's a lot of things that council here has to consider. We've heard from you. We have to consider what we're going to do in this instance. So uh, again, I thank you for uh, for coming here today. Anything further, Council? Oh, sorry. Councillor Hebert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do respect each one of you that, are, that came to present your case. And I'm going to wait for uh, Councillor Siemens to come up with an amendment. I do feel for you. Safety is very important. But do you want the sidewalk? We, we worked on this for a long time. I think we came up with a pretty good proposal. But if there's something we can do, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Anything further? Would I be able to ask questions of administration right now? Go ahead. Okay, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my recollection, uh, since I've been on council, I believe, I know this isn't a regional path necessarily, but the Maplewood development sidewalks that were done recently, would you be able to clarify the funding? What percentage of that was local area improvement and what was not, not, not whether it was grants or city, but just what was local area improvement and what was other? Uh, that uh, sidewalk project covered the general neighborhood of Georgetown, Maplewood, Stonebridge Crossing. Uh, that was a local improvement which was 50% covered by the local improvement area, which was the residents within that neighborhood, and 50% uh, by the city of Steinbeck generally across the entire city. All right, and this is going back a bit further, so if you don't have the information offhand, uh, that's fine. But when the Southland Estates, I'm not exactly sure what the road was, but I know uh, sidewalk went in there probably in the last dozen years or 15 years. Would you be able to tell me the funding uh, of that? What was local area? Uh, that also would have been a similar plan. 50% was borne by the local area and 50% of the cost was borne by the city of Steinbeck overall. Okay, thank you. And that's... That's all you have then, uh, Councillor Spinner. Did you have a statement yet? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Anything further of Council? We need to hear the amendment. Oh, we need yeah. to hear the amendment. <laughs> this oh. might be your shining moment. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted opinions from uh, the rest of the Council, but I think the amendment I would like to propose and if I get a seconder, then we can speak to it. But uh, I would propose that we reduce the scope of the project to uh, limestone, or eliminate the asphalt, and uh, eliminate the uh, lighting uh, component of it, and uh, put up, uh, ask Manitoba Hydro to continue street lighting all the way down Park Road. Councillor Penner, you are the uh, mover. Do you accept that friendly amendment? Question for administration, if I may, Mr. Mayor? through you. Uh, I, re I remember one of the plans was that was uh, offered to us was a limestone. Do you know offhand the approximate savings? I do believe it was actually rather minimal uh, as opposed to asphalt. We had three options, concrete, asphalt and limestone and we chose the, the middle ground so that we could have uh, wheeled transportation. Uh, 
Yes, uh, going on memory, I believe the cost of asphalt surfacing was 50% greater than the cost of a limestone pathway. Sorry, uh, forgive me, I'm just looking at numbers here. Uh, Follow-up question to administration, please, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is it feasible or expected that Manitoba Hydro would continue to run lighting, or would there be an expense to the city to do that if we requested it? Uh, I believe the city uh, would be expected to install any street lights on the existing poles uh, along Park Road East. However, a uh, point I'd like to advise Council of is there is a section of Park Road East which uh, is immediately east of the golf course uh, where there is no hydro poles present because they are not permitted due to the location of the airstrip. So there would, not, there would be a section that would be unable to be lit by streetlights. Regrettably, Mr. Mayor, I do not accept. Okay. Anything further of council? Anything important? Yes, thank you, Mr. Whoa, Mayor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. Order. Pardon? You, that's for a second. You asked for a second. You have to ask for a seconder. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If there's a seconder. Oh, I thought he said he did you did No, that was for a friendly amendment. That was a friendly oh. amendment. Oh, so now, okay, seconder. Do we have a seconder for that? I'll second that. Okay. Go ahead. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think... Uh, that, that's new information to me about with the, the street lights. That would make sense because we want to keep our airport there as well and safe. Uh, I think it is important that we, that this is a safety consideration. Number one, it's a safety issue uh, for the citizens of our community. And uh, we need to do something. We need to put in the pathway, but I do not see it as a solution uh, the amount of cost that is going to Clear Spring Green's residences. So uh, a part of that is then we need to reduce our costs. If we can reduce our costs with uh, putting in limestone pathways like we have everywhere else uh, in the last uh, three uh, and reduce our lighting, I would remove the lighting uh, totally at this point and maybe after if there are issues we can come back to that uh, and uh, I guess another question could be to administration if lighting along the pathway would be allowed at all in that area because of the airport. Is that, can I ask? Yeah, go ahead, ask that question. Is, is any lighting an issue there or just street lighting? Uh, the uh, proposed lighting uh, that was recommended for the pathway project itself would not be uh, impacted. Okay. It's, it's only the fact that there are no hydro poles along at certain section of Park Road East. So I would still maintain, uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, we need to reduce the cost to uh, the citizens, but we still need to put in a pathway. And uh, I would recommend that we put in a, a limestone pathway and uh, no lighting at this time. Yeah. Anything further, Councillor Hubert? I agree, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Councillor Siemens uh, for the reasons that he stated. Uh, considering my background and stuff, uh, I'm always very conscious of safety of uh, pedestrians and, uh, and, bicy and cyclists. And I've cycled that uh, street numerous times. I enjoy cycling around town and also uh, walking and jogging around town. And it's a uh, definitely a safety issue. I agree with uh, what's been pre presented. And uh, definitely, in my opinion, a limestone path without uh, lighting is... Uh, definite option uh, for starters because if we're talking safety we we have to do something and I was I'll be honest I was disappointed when I campaigned I wanted I was new to council I didn't know how things worked I expected that we would be doing that uh, last spring already and here we are a year later and uh, we still haven't done anything so uh, I think we need to go ahead with something and uh, if this is a viable solution I'm definitely uh, on board with it any further council Do you have? No, I just need to think for it. Think about it for a second. <laughs> you, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is, the amendment is a difficult one because I, you know, it's not, I, I don't philosophically or whatever have a problem with reducing the scope in terms of removing the lighting and changing to limestone. 
but I didn't really hear that during the, you know, in terms of this, if we're listening to the feedback we're receiving, I didn't really hear that that's, that we're getting at anything close to the issue in, in terms of what the issue is. Um, I heard, I was, I didn't keep an exact track, but there are almost as many that seem to indicate that they, if this were to go ahead, they would not want the lighting removed, then would want it removed and brought up safety concerns. And Councillor Siemens referenced safety concerns a lot. And the first action here is taking out, is taking out lighting. If I were here, if I were hearing like a strong, uh, sentiment from the neighborhood that, you know what, this, this would be better if, if we didn't have the cost of the lighting, but I didn't really hear that when the questions were getting asked. And so I'm not really convinced that changes a lot. And I'm very concerned by Councillor Seaman's suggestion that, you know, if we see in the future that lighting's a problem, then we can put it up later. Um, that's not proper planning. I mean, if we, act if we actually think it needs lighting, then we should do it. And I will say that in terms of when we got recommendations from our administration, there was a fairly strong recommendation that we put the lighting in for safety reasons. And um, your administration tends to give good recommendations, particularly when they're talking about matters of safety. And so I have not really heard a compelling case based in the context of everything I've heard in the public hearing. I'm not really getting the sense that this resolves the issue. The difference here is a difference of opinion over who pays and how much. That is the difference. So this changes, you know, reduces the amount that they would pay a little bit because we take out the lighting. But the real objection is uh, that the neighborhood would obviously like the city as a whole to pay more. It's a difference, and it's just that's just simply a difference of opinion. And there's no easy way around that. If we, you know, it would be simple. We could just say we'll have the city pay for everything, but then a lot of other people in Stomach would be unhappy because why are we paying for? There's no, there's no, there's no easy solution on this. So um, I think at this point that I will, uh, I will vote ag I, I will vote against the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Any further counsel? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I truly wish that the question with regards to the limestone would have been posed to the people that are present here so we could have actually some information uh, and feedback on that. Uh, so with that and what Councillor Zweigstra has mentioned, um, to my argument for the asphalt path was uh, similar to the reasoning of a lot of the individuals that presented here today uh, of children wanting to get to school and they want to get to school the vast majority or I shouldn't say the vast majority but a lot of children that I see going to, to and from school uh, at uh, this uh, Stony Brook Middle School which I live nearby is on scooters is on rollerblades is on their their zoomy zoomy uh, shoes uh, it's not so much anymore with bikes and on bicycles. So you, an asphalt path is what I, I was moving for, uh, and I wish that we would have had a little more feedback from, from the gallery to be able to make a more informed decision on that. Uh, but that's why I will vote against the friendly amendment. Any further counsel? Anything further? Yes, Mr. Mayor. This is all about cost. Councilor Swigster is absolutely right. It's all about the cost and trying to reduce costs where it's more palatable. And uh, how do we get there? We can uh, reduce the scope of the project. We can, uh, we can also make an amendment and, and ask council to, to pay more, but council isn't willing to do that at this point. So how else do we do that? How do we make it more palatable for the citizens of Clear Spring Greens to, to pay less for this project? They, this is setting a precedent of sorts. Uh, on future pathways as well. So I think this is uh, a small token, uh, or it would reduce it somewhat by reducing, uh, taking the asphalt component out that, and uh, along with the lighting. Thank you. Well, Council, uh, I just want to start by saying thank you for everyone who's come, everyone who's presented. Oh, oh sorry. Anything closely? Thank you, Mr. No, no, no. no. You got amendment we have to vote on. We have amendment to vote on the closing. amendment we're not, here. We're not voting yeah, on no, we have to vote on the amendment. Yeah, so you get, you get closing yet. <laughs> we got two motions going at one time here. No. We're, we're voting on... The amendment. The amendment. We're on the amendment. Okay. And the amendment is... Take no, no, no lighting, no asphalt. Okay. Anyways, I was uh, thanking everyone for coming. You guys did a great job in your presentations, Mr. Joliker. You spent a lot of time on this. Thank you very much. We've also spent a lot of time on this. This has not been an easy decision. As you know, it's, it's taken a couple years for us to get to this point. Um, having said that, um, I really believe that, that the direction of council with, with the, the lighting and the asphalt 
uh, I believe that this is something we, we talked about and we wanted it to be um, um, like a movement path for wheels, right? And that's why we wanted to do this. I can't find myself supporting this amendment at this time. I'm all for uh, cutting the cost, uh, the, the, the lighting, I could, I could see myself removing that. That one seemed to be, you know, 50-50 or, or even maybe a little more than 50-50. But at this point, I would like to see uh, the asphalt and I would really like to see the estimates come back, like when the, the tenders, um, before we start cutting things. So I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? Okay, that is denied. Where were we on the other one? Are we had final comments? Okay, anything in closing? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, there has been some reference with regards to funding models, 50-50 uh, shared in, in uh, some of the other neighboring neighborhoods. Uh, it's important to note, as I had said in my original motion, this is a, not a pathway that is of a greater transportation network. This is a pathway that's directly linking your citizens to Steinbeck. This isn't something that is going to be used by other, other, other uh, people to a large extent. It will, I will not, not deny, be used by some. Hence, there is the 80-20 component of the cost sharing. The city ha is sharing in the cost. Um, with regards to the limestone and such, uh, that is something that, that we as council have decided here. Um, this is not by any means an easy decision. And to reference if I would want this bill on my taxes, the answer is no. I truly would not. And that's something that's very difficult to say considering putting this motion forward. However, we as council have to look at what we were presented from the community. There are options for you to come and get the, get the project denied that you can follow up on. And we are following through with what we were asked to do. So that's my, my closing comments of we did what we were asked to do. There is a check and balance yet available to you. Uh, if you feel that that is your best option, then by all means, please use it. Thank you, Councilor Penner. Thank you, Council. Uh, again, yes, I do want to thank you for coming out, and uh, I really I feel for I feel for the neighborhood because the level of service does not reflect your tax assessment because your your a five hundred thousand dollar house is still worth five hundred thousand dollars no matter where it is in Steinbach, and and that's regardless of the service you get, and that that makes this unfair, and that's why we've had to delete this zoning from our, our city plan. Having said that, we were faced with a question. There was a large group of, a large component of your neighborhood came to us and requested a sidewalk. That was a very difficult meeting for us too. It was not a pleasant meeting. Uh, that was, we, we were working on it. We were in the process of working on it. It was probably about 40% done, and we, we were, it was a well, fairly negative meeting. We were quite attacked. So we went forward, and we kept moving on this. And we, we deliberated on numbers. I remember we spent quite a bit of time, uh, Councillor Swagster, you'll say, too, that we spent a lot of time on figuring out what is the percentage the rest of Stymac should pay and, and what your neighborhood should pay. And we figured that it probably would be very close to that 80-20. 20% of the rest of the community would use that sidewalk, but possibly 100% of your community could use that sidewalk. And that's why we went with these numbers. Um, maybe, maybe you see it as not fair, but this is what we saw as fair. And this, we, we, we deliberated over a long period of time. As a, again, as I said, it's taken us two years to get to this spot. And, and uh, we really thought, in our hearts, we were doing something good. And, and uh, as, Mike, as uh, Councillor Swagster uh, alluded to, we couldn't let you know about the purchase of the lot. Any time the city's looking to buy something, the price goes up. It's automatic. As soon as, as soon as someone knows we want it, it goes up. And if they find out what we want it for, then the price even goes up higher. So this is why we had to do this privately and quietly. 
we can't talk about land deals because what happens is the prices go up. So we do feel for you. We understand this is a this is a burden, but there is a benefit in the long term. I come from a neighborhood where we had to pay for a sidewalk. I know what you're facing. There was there was um, uh, um, objections there too, but in the end, it ended up being the most used sidewalk pretty much in our community, and, and it still is today. So. Sidewalks are good. We, we actually now purposely buy homes that have sidewalks on, them, on, the, on the properties because we know how much we'll use the sidewalk. So the sidewalk will, will get used. After, after you get down a few years and things get paid, it will be one of the greatest things that, that, have, that has happened to that area, believe me, because that's how, that's how I've become to feel about sidewalks. When you don't have one, and then you get one, yeah, you've got to pay for it. I know that. It's <coughs> and it comes on your taxes, and you pay for it. We've, we've done it. Uh, it's not like we have, we know where you guys are coming from. But anyways, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll call for the question at this time. All those in favor of approving? That is carried. Thank you. Okay, Council, there is no delegation. There are no reports and recommendations from the City Manager. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, that resolution was for first reading to the bylaw. Uh, recommendation from administration is if Council wants to proceed, uh, the bylaw may also be given second reading. Second reading, okay. Do I have a motion for second reading? Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Swagstra. Okay, Council, we'll call for the question for second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, thank you. Uh, number nine, administration. A, accounts payable. It's in the back of the book, Council. You've all had an uh, opportunity to look it over. Looking for, okay. We'll just, pause wait. For we'll just wait, we'll pause. Okay, 9E, accounts payable in the back of the book. We've all had a chance to look it over. We're looking for uh, a motion to approve. Councillor Hebert, second by Councillor Penner. Any comments? Oh. Any? No comments. Nothing in closing. Call for the question. All those in favor? That is carried. Now, 9B, bylaw 2136. Secondary plan, first reading. That starts on page 16. Mr. Warkentine, could you please introduce this file? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. This uh, is proposed bylaw 2136 uh, is a proposed secondary plan for a property with an address uh, commonly known as 110 PTH 12 North. Uh, developer is uh, intending on redeveloping uh, the current parcel of land, which is approximately 20 acres in size. A uh, recommendation is for Council to give this uh, secondary plan proposal first reading uh, to allow uh, a public hearing to be scheduled. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councilor Swagstra? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will move first reading. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councilor Siemens? Go ahead, Councilor Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is to approve a uh, first reading to a secondary plan along uh, uh, 110 PTH uh, 12 North. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, quite exciting to see. I'm looking forward to uh, the public hearing where we get uh, where we get uh, more information and uh, and perhaps comments from the public. Uh, basically, the uh, the proposal here is to uh, to have commercial mixed use, and so there would be uh, a combination of retail, commercial, institutional, recreational, and such service uh, uh, that would be uh, that would be within here. So there'd be both commercial and uh, and residential. 
And uh, I should note as well that when you look at our official community plan, uh, the uh, property is a designated commercial policy area. So as far as looking at our long-term planning, uh, this area is intended to become, uh, uh, to be eventually zoned, uh, to be zoned commercial. Right now it's zoned Development Reserve 1, meaning it's being held uh, in a, basically in a holding pattern until a plan is put forward. And it's exciting to see that there is a plan that we're going to uh, find more information about uh, when we have the hearing. Councillor Siemens. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too am looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, this is all about. I like the name, Market. And uh, simply it, it shows it's something unique to Steinbeck. Uh, we don't have anything like this uh, currently, so I'm looking forward to the, the public hearing as well. Anything further, Council? Anything in closing? No. Yes, thank you, Council. I'm actually very excited about this too because uh, presently, when we look at mixed use, we look at commercial on the bottom and, and residential on top on, this, on the upper floors. And this will be mixed use within, this, in, within the site. So there'll be some areas of commercial, retail, and some areas of residential. It's gonna be a little different than what we're used to, but I'm really excited to see how this will go. And uh, I would agree with Councillor uh, Siemens, I like the market name too. So uh, it goes well. We need more markets in this community. <laughs> Anyways, call for the question. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, uh, 9C bylaw 2137 rezoning uh, 1, 110 PTH 12 uh, from uh, development reserve to CMX first reading. That's on page 45. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wardney, could you please introduce this file? Yes, Mr. Mayor. This uh, bylaw 2137 is related to the file just dealt with by Council. Uh, this particular bylaw uh, is an application to rezone the uh, same property from DR1 Development Reserve 1 uh, to CMX, which is Commercial Mixed Use Zone. Again, uh, the applicant is proposing to rezone uh, for purposes of redeveloping the property uh, as a commercial residential mixed use. A recommendation from administration is the council give this bylaw first reading. That would also uh, permit this particular bylaw to be uh, scheduled for a public hearing. Council, would you like to re? Uh, okay, Councilor Hebert. That we that we pass it. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Uh, uh, Councillor Penner, go ahead, Councillor Hebert. I further to what has just been said on uh, 2136. It's exciting to see that this area will be developed. It's on uh, Main Street coming into town. That's an empty lot right now, and uh, to be, uh, like I said, exciting to see uh, something go in there. And uh, what's being proposed here uh, definitely would, looks like it's going to benefit the city, uh, and so therefore uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Anything further? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is essentially uh, the some housekeeping that needs to be done in order for the previous plan to be able to proceed feasibly. So I'm um, interested to see how we uh, proceed with this new zoning, and I'm excited to see uh, the potential of what could be built there. Anything further of council? Anything in closing? No, thank you. Okay. Yes, council, this is the first step, in uh, this will allow us to have a public hearing on the... Uh, on the rezoning also, and uh, this will get us forward to, uh, to, to hearing from the public. So call for the question, all those in favor? That is carried. 9D, on page 54, Council, we have building permits. We've had a great December again, and uh, we're gonna toot our horn a little bit on this one. We've We've had, uh, well, almost $5 million worth of permits, $4.9 million. Incredible again. Uh, just a couple highlights. We have a, a tenant improvement to convert a vet clinic. So we've got a, a vet clinic coming to town. That was for $1.5 million. And then we've got a uh, new development in the Northview development. We've got a Petro Canada card lock for around $2.7 million. So <clears throat> these are uh, technically two, two new businesses coming to town. It's very exciting. Uh, quite a bit of commercial activity on that. 
uh, we're looking at uh, 4.5 million of the 4.9 million is commercial activity. So another great year. We've had we've had one we've added one dwelling unit, which was uh, from 213. We've gone to 214. But we the the great thing here is we're tipping just over 81 million dollars in value of permits this year. So it's just exciting. Just in a great year, we've had uh, almost $46 million worth of commercial uh, development in our community, and the residential was just over $35 million. So council, great year. Our focus has always been this year uh, to create a, a climate, to get our, to uh, do a lot of, our push was economic development. It's working, guys. We're doing great. So uh, just looking for a motion to approve the uh, building permits. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Swagstra. Sorry, I know I, I stole all your thunder, but do you have anything yeah, to add? I was gonna say thanks for taking all my comments. Okay. Um, nothing further. Okay. You've convinced me, Mr. Mayor, we have to approve these building <laughs> permits. This is good. I changed his mind. <laughs> okay. Call the question, yes. Mr. Mayor. To administration, not that it makes a big difference, but uh, near the bottom there, 1,084.63 Manitoba Incorporated. It's a two-story house for 280,000. There's no address there. But it does make a big difference, but it's just this. Uh, yeah, this this is a summary list that's uh, created from best information available at the time. Okay. Uh, we'll look into that. Thank you. Call for the question. All those in favor. That uh, is carried. Okay, number 10, council question period. Go ahead. To you, Mr. Mayor, to administration, simply because it never happens, or it happens very seldom. Under council procedural bylaw, don't we have to stop after two hours and have a motion of council to proceed? <laughs> that is a good question, Councillor Siemens. I'm not uh, familiar with that. In the last 13 years, we had to do it once. So just a point of order. And uh, actually, we should just finish the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I was thinking, too, it has gone long enough. <laughs> Jake had to come up with that. Okay, uh, <laughs> number 11E, Jacob Library, minutes read November 20th. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I may just, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just to make a note on the library board, you, uh, you gave me the pleasure of serving on, on the library board as council representative, and uh, we haven't officially give, uh, given recognition to our uh, new head librarian, that, our new director of librarian services, pardon me, uh, that has come on board, uh, Christy Craker Boggs, and I believe her first day was yesterday. So uh, she's currently working with our past uh, Library, uh, Director of Library Services, uh, Carolyn Graham, and I just want to also commend Carolyn publicly of all the work that she has done at the library, investing into uh, the education of, of younger, younger uh, citizens of ours, uh, as well as the fantastic job she has done with her staff and making the Jacob Library a real hub of the community. So I want to acknowledge her and then also Christy Craker Boggs of having some shoes to fill. Um. Thank you very much for, uh, for adding that information and uh, also Councillor Penner, you've done a great job on that board and you've, uh, you were uh, instrumental in getting the new computers and, uh, and many other things as, as we're going along. So you're doing a great job and we're very, we're th I'm thankful I put you there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's no other business. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Hebert. And for the question, all those in favor? That is carried. Uh, okay, the next regular council meeting is Tuesday, January 21st at 7.30. Thank you.